Hey guys, uh, here we are again, and life is good, and there's lots to be thankful for. So uh, if we were to do a what's good, hypothetically, since it's a rainy Monday, um, going off the top of my head, my what's good would be there is a, uh, we have a little plastic wreath, I don't know if you can see it, it's on the door, that we never took off uh, from Christmas, and uh, this bird has laid four little eggs in it. So that's good. Um, anyway, new book. I'm super excited about it. Doing uh, The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Y'all should have it in packet form. Um, if somehow you don't or you lost it, uh, there is a digital copy that I put on Canvas. But the goal is that you guys will be annotating, right? So you'll need to find a way to annotate with the PDF if you don't have your packet. But you should have the packet. It's the exact same as the full text. Um, it's a short story. Well, technically it's a novella, um, but either way, it won't take us more than about a week, a week and a half. Um, but before we jump into that, into like some intro notes with that, I just wanted to give you all a couple reminders um, about just stuff. Uh, the first thing, y'all feel free to reach out to me. I really am not built for this um, in the sense that like my favorite part of teaching is you guys. And when I don't, when I can't interact with y'all face to face and demonstrate my care um, and my love for y'all, it just, it feels weird, right? I feel like I'm very isolated and uh, not able to care for you the way I want to. So with that being said, um, if y'all ever need anything, uh, please reach out, right? Email me. Um, we can set up a Google Hangout or a Google Meet, whatever you call it. Um, you know, et cetera. I want to make sure that you guys know that like my care for y'all has not changed at all. And I hope you feel that in some way. So however you need to feel that, you know, uh, reach out to me and we can get in contact as needed. Um, secondly on canvas, um, you guys should see as soon as you go to English too, there's this big tab that says like virtual learning daily goals, click here, make sure you click it on that every day. Um, it'll have the weekly schedule, but as things change, um, I'll update it right for the day. So every single day before your period of English, just make sure you click on that and recheck. Okay, let me make sure that this is what I'm supposed to be doing for Tuesday or this is what I'm supposed to be doing for Wednesday. Um, and I'll hyperlink everything and keep that updated in that regard. So just make sure that's that becomes a habit. Um, thirdly, tomorrow I sent you guys all an invite for a quick 10 minute check in with me. Um, really, this is my way to figure out, okay, how we're going to, how we are going to do Google meets. So I split y'all into groups of four and five. Uh, it'll take 10 minutes per check in. It'll, it's going to be super quick. Y'all just like, we'll log on. I'll just make sure that, uh, that it all works. I'll kind of explain what the small group discussions are going to look like that we'll do on Thursday with Google meet. Um, and then we'll close the tab and uh, the next group will log in. It's just a way for me to touch base with y'all, make sure that I'm working Google Meet correctly, that you guys have access to it correctly, um, and that we're ready to go for Thursday when we have our first discussion. Um, lastly, make sure you check this out. Holden uh, reminded me as he was leaving, he's like, man, I'm, I hate the fact that we're not going to see the like the board for the whole year, the roadmap. Um, and I was like, yeah, that really, that really sings. So I took a picture of it. And I figured out how to edit it with the Google Pencil. Um, and so this is what it'll look like. But you'll see the unit takeaway. Oh, there you go. Um, on unit seven, you'll see the unit takeaway for the princess and the goblin right here. Um, and then you'll see the focus for unit eight. So I'll continue to post this if you want to see like where we're going and where we've been, which I think is super helpful. Um, and I'll keep track and star with the unit that we're at. Um, but that is available if you guys want to check that out. So with that being said, um, have your packet with you right now. Um, I'm just going to run through a couple notes and things to look for as we jump into Jekyll and Hyde. Um, you guys should be writing, jotting down some notes since we can't do it in the front of the book, maybe just like on the back of the packet or in a blank space. Um, and then homework for tonight will be for you guys to start reading. So the text Obviously, it's called the, uh, the Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. It's a short story. It's kind of a mystery. It's a murder mystery um, where, yeah, there's just some fishy stuff going on in the whole, the whole story. It's only about 56 pages. Um, 
the whole story is about this guy trying to figure out, you know, what's at the root of this murder and what's at the root of all these strange happenings going on. Um, it's written by Robert Louis Stevenson, who's the same guy who wrote uh, Treasure Island. Um, if you guys know that story, uh, there's like a Muppets movie, Muppets Treasure Island. Really good. But it's a short story he wrote, um, and it's set in what's called Victorian England which is like 1840s to like 1890s. Um, think, you know, crazy factories, think black smoke, right? Think uh, big dresses for women, think suits and top hats for men, right? That's kind of the, uh, the scene that we're working with in London right now. Um, and our essential question for the unit, which again, if you go back to the roadmap on Canvas, you can see it uh, under unit eight. But see, the essential question is, what is the inmost nature of the traveler, right? So I want you guys to write that, highlight it, circle it somewhere in your packet. Like, this is what we're reading for. What is the inmost nature, as we're all traveling on this journey of life, what is the inmost nature of each and every one of us, of the pilgrims, right? If you consider us as pilgrims going towards the Holy Land, uh, what's the inmost nature of each of us. And you'll see that's kind of a mixture of the unit focus for Beowulf, right? Which was a little bit about identity. Um, you know, who is the traveler? Uh, it's also a little bit um, along the same lines as Macbeth, right? Like looking at man's dark heart and our inclination to follow dark paths. Um, but we're really going to be looking at just who are we, right? And what does our nature say about us? Um, and a couple notes about Victorian England. Uh, it was extremely divided. And this is going to be pretty much uh, the primary focus as we work through Jekyll and Hyde. Um, everything was divided really in two, right? And so the city itself, I posted two pictures here. Um, the city itself was a duality, right? It was split into really what was the upper class, which if you're trying to have like a mental picture, uh, this picture on the left, right? Like bustling streets, high-rise buildings, uh, beautiful gardens. Um, these people's homes would just be, you know, like uh, grandfather clocks and just this gorgeous furniture. Um, again, everyone dressed up, you know, to the nines. Uh, and then there was the lower class, which was this picture on the left. You know, think dirty side streets, uh, multiple families living in one home like tons of disease, uh, think lots of rats in the sewers, right? Think people tossing stuff out their windows. Um, you know, if you've seen any movie about, you know, London during that time, you know, belching factories with black smoke, uh, it was it was very split, right? And so it was either, it was the upper class and the lower class, but they did not really uh, coincide at all, right? You either went down this street or you went down this street and it was very different. Um, so not only was the city divided, though, but the the Victorian man, and I say man meaning men and women, um, but the Victorian person was also very divided. Okay, so you, you'd have like the face that he would put on for society was well-dressed, right, was respectable, um, was polite, was probably socially a Christian, Um and then you had the mask that they would take off when they got home, right? Which was just themselves, which is, I mean, human nature hasn't changed, so it's us, right? So, um, but I think even more than nowadays, right? We still wear masks nowadays, but even more than now, in Victorian England, it was like, you did not let your real self be seen, right? You only let your good side be seen. Um, that was the socially acceptable way of presenting yourself. Right. And so we'll see these dualities all throughout Jekyll and Hyde. And it's something that I really want you guys focusing on, right, is looking at how the city is split in two, looking at how the people are split in two. Um, and that's obviously going to be leading us toward our answer to the essential question, which is what is the endless nature of the traveler? Um, so there's some things I want you to look at. Duality. Right. That might be a word to just write and circle in your notes. Uh, lastly, Here's your goal for chapter one. Um, chapter one is called The Story of the Door. And these are the things that I want you guys to have annotated for um, 
I guess you'll be watching this tomorrow. So yeah, I have this annotated for Wednesday. Any sort of duality, right? What we just talked about, I want you to annotate for it. If it talks about the duality of London, um, about how some streets you don't go down, some streets you do, uh, that's something you should be annotating for, right? Uh, on the first page, it'll talk about a character named Dr. Utterson, or excuse me, Mr. Utterson. And in the very first paragraph, it'll begin describing him and it'll show him as a split character, right? And so I want you guys noting, you know, the different sides of his personality, what he's like in public, what he's like in private, uh, the side his friend sees uh, or his friends see, the side that, you know, only he himself sees. So anything to do with duality, your, you know, mental antenna should be, should be on um, and you should be annotating that. Secondly, um, there's this, this image of two doors that we'll see as we go through the text. And anytime it starts talking about one of these two doors, you need to pay attention. Um, cause again, we're talking about dualities here, right? So the first door it'll describe on page two, that's the only one that you'll see in this first chapter, but annotate the description of the first door, right? What's it like? Uh, what is the sense around it? What is the, the general feel of it, um, et cetera. Thirdly, I want you guys tying into the, uh, to the unit focus. I want you guys annotating any notable sayings uh, or perceived beliefs about man's nature, right? So for example, um, for me, it's on, it'll be in the first paragraph for all of us actually. One of the things that Mr. Utterson says is he says, I let my brother go to the devil in his own way. Right. So a notable belief about the nature of man is that, you know, we tend to go to the devil and that being a good friend means letting your friend do that. Right. Um, obviously, we can disagree with that. I profoundly disagree with that. Um, but any sayings like that, that might give us an insight into how they perceive man or how man is throughout all cultures, uh, you should be annotating. And then lastly, just speaking on a, on a plot level, I want you guys annotating for any clues uh, that you think will help solve the plot's mystery. So the plot will only really begin to be set up in this first chapter. Um, but as we read onward, be looking for specifics like, oh, that's fishy, right? Like, I mean, this really is a detective story. Um, so I want you annotating for things like that. All right. So enjoy it. It's a good story. I'll post the audio book um, and you guys will be able to listen to it there. And let's just uh, try and stay positive. All right. I love all y'all deeply. Um, again, if you need to feel that more, reach out to me and I'll be happy to get in touch with you um, and just, you know, verbally communicate a little bit more than I've been able to. But let's uh, let's keep up the good work.